Life after meth addiction. What's up you guys? My name's Nicole and this is my YouTube channel, Discovering Nicole, where we talk about all things addiction recovery, mom life, sometimes some makeup, and just so much more. If you guys enjoy my content, please be sure to give this video a like, share it with your friends, leave me a comment. I got a couple of announcements. So, all my videos that are pre-recorded go up in Patreon first. They go up in Patreon for 24 hours before I ever drop them on my YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check out my Patreon, it's called Discovering Nicole. The link will be down in the description and in the comment section as well. Also, don't forget to check out my amazing recovery necklaces. I have this style and I also have a dog tag style and they have recovery quotes on them. This one says, recovery is not about giving something up. Recovery is about taking everything back. And the dog tags say, recovery didn't open the gates of heaven to let me in. Recovery opened the gates of hell to let me out. You can find all my recovery necklaces and I will be adding stickers very soon on my Etsy storefront, which is Discovering Recovery. And I will also link that in the description box and the comment section. So this is EP2, episode two of Life After Meth Addiction. And in today's video, we are gonna be talking about weight gain and eating disorders and cross addiction, which are some things that a lot of people who get sober from methamphetamine and other stimulants experience. So let's get right into it. I started using stimulants in 2000, 1998, excuse me, in, in 1998 was the first time I ever smoked methamphetamine. I was a full-blown methamphetamine addict buying meth from drug dealers by the year 2000. I specifically seeked out stimulants, methamphetamine, cocaine, ephedrine, uh, hydroxy cut at the time had it in there, mini thins, all these different over-the-counter diet pills had this stimulant ephedra in them back in the day. And so I seeked out those medications because I had a really big insecurity with my weight. I have always been insecure about my weight. I'm not anymore. Now that I do social media, um, I have been able to like really become strong in myself. People bodying, shaming me, making fun of my weight doesn't affect me at all. But when I was younger, I was highly sensitive to it. So, and when I look back on it, I wasn't even fat. Like what the fuck? Do you guys ever like look back at your pictures from when you were a kid in high school and you thought you were fat or ugly and you're like, Oh my God, if I could only be fat like that now, oh Lord, that's what it was like for me. I wasn't even overweight, but I had a complex. I was very insecure and I thought that I was. So I went to using stimulants. And like I said, by the time I was a senior in high school, I was addicted to methamphetamine. I got sober from meth July 13th of 2015 is when I went into treatment and got off of all drugs. When you use methamphetamine, specifically methamphetamine, it produces more dopamine than cocaine, than heroin, than other opioids, than sex, than eating chocolate. Okay, it produces more dopamine than anything you can do. And that is why it is so addicting. That is why people keep going back to it after they get sober. That's why methamphetamine has such a high relapse rate because when a person gets sober, it takes years for our brain to heal and get back to producing just any type of dopamine. And, and it doesn't even produce the amount of dopamine that we were getting when we were on methamphetamine. And that is why a lot of us return to using stimulants because we are debilitated by depression. We are debilitated by lethargy. We are de debilitated by the feeling of having no motivation. I know. I dealt with these feelings for seven years in sobriety. For seven years, I fucking held on to that fucking rope, holding on for dear life and trying to work through this because I didn't think it was ever going to go away. I want you guys to know that it has taken me that long to get to a point where now I look forward to getting up in the morning. Now I want to go outside. I want to be active with my son. There was a time where I couldn't do that. I had to make myself. I had to push myself 
to do regular activities like bathing myself, combing my hair, brushing my teeth in sobriety, in sobriety. And you're probably asking yourself, why stay sober then? Why stay sober if it sucks like that? A lot of people don't talk about this. They don't talk about how it feels to be sober and still be depressed and still be struggling. The reason why I stayed sober was for my son. Because I don't want to lose my son. Because I love my son more than I love myself. And I would rather be miserable and stay sober and not risk my child being taken from me again. So, because of that depression, because of that lack of motivation, I fell into some very bad habits of overeating. See, food also produces dopamine and gives your brain that feel good feeling. And so it's really easy as a person who has starved themselves for many years because they were on stimulants to go all the way to the other side. So over here on the left, I was starving myself. I was on stimulants. I was skinny as fuck. And then I got sober and went all the way over to the right where I was overeating and getting those dopamine hits from food. Okay. It's really easy to fall into these unhealthy habits. And that's what happened to me for many, many years. I'm just now starting to course correct. In 2021, I was 250 pounds. Today I'm 210. Okay. It's taken me a long time. I fall off a lot and I have to get back on track, but I'm trying. I'm trying. I drink a 64 ounce bottle of water. I drink three of those a day, every day. I pee so much. Sometimes I wonder, is there something wrong with me? But I'm trying to make these small changes, right? Cross addiction is real. And it happens to many, many people that get sober from substance use disorder, okay? A lot of people get cross addicted to food, gambling, spending money, drama and gossip. That can be something because it also gives you those dopamine hits, right? This is why it's so important for somebody like me to stay in therapies. That's why I'm back in therapy. And you guys, when I tell you my therapy appointment I had on Thursday was amazing because we talked about all these things I'm talking with you guys about now. I want you to know that you don't have to be miserable for seven years like I was, okay? You have to be proactive and advocate for yourself. And for some reason, I got really stuck and I didn't do that for many years. And I kind of just fell back and just sat and I just let myself be, you know? Now I'm being proactive, I'm in therapy, I'm you know, doing my health things, drinking plenty of water, going walking every single day. Even if I don't record it, I'm walking. I'm walking. This is a habit that I'm making that is helping me in my life and helping me improve my life. You know, some people also get cross addicted to restricting their food intake as a punishment, you know, because they think that they don't deserve to have food. These are all things that I have struggled with during my addiction and in sobriety. Talking about these things are hard. It's hard to talk to you guys about overeating for me because I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. I feel like I should know better. I feel like I should be a lot farther along in my sobriety than I am with eight years sober. I feel like being eight years sober, I should know how to eat healthy and take care of my body. But I'll be honest with you guys, I'm just now learning. I have grown up for many years only doing things that made me feel good. When I was in active addiction, I used drugs because they made me feel good. When I got sober, I leaned on food because it made me feel good. I leaned on spending money because it made me feel good. And now I'm trying to find what makes me feel good from the inside. And what makes me feel good is taking care of my body and eating foods that I prepare at my home. And these are things that you guys have been following me for a long time. You guys know for the last six months, I have changed my husband and my sons and my diet to only eating things that I prepare at home. Now, of course, we went on vacation, we went out to eat, but you guys know what I'm saying. Like we used to eat out every single day. 
I used to get food from fast food places every single day. And that we do not do that anymore. When I tell you, it's, it's an everyday fight because my son will ask, can we stop at Burger King? Can we get Chick-fil-A? And you know what? It's easy to do that. It's easy to get the fast food. And I'm, as a mother, sometimes I'm tired. I don't want to cook. So what I have started to do to combat that is I have started making dinner in the mornings. Yep, I just got done making pork loin, jasmine rice, and asparagus. And the boys can heat it up when they get home. That way I have dinner made, I have laundry done, I have everything done early in the morning, and I can do what I wanna do in the afternoon. And that's helping me. That's helping me to not go out to eat. If I had known that, that doing methamphetamine was gonna fuck my brain up as bad as it did for so long, I would have never done that shit, for real. Because like it really fucked me up, you guys, and I'm just now getting back to where I can actually function like a regular human being. And I want you guys to know that if you feel the way I felt, please don't let it go on like I did for seven years. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and getting help for, for your mental health is so important. It is so freaking important. If you're struggling with overeating, start making small changes. Small changes like I'm doing, like drinking water, only eating at the house. If you're somebody who's struggling with restricting your food, get into therapy, work with a dietitian that will help you to create healthy, fulfilling meals that you feel comfortable eating. Join some, um, eating disorder recovery groups where you can find support from other women who are going through the same thing. And I'm going to tell y'all, I tell it to y'all so many times, snitching on my addiction is what helps me stay sober. That's why I tell you guys about all the struggles that I have. That's why I'm honest with you guys about my struggles with overeating and my struggles with um, cravings for methamphetamine. That's why I share with you guys that my weight is a trigger and that looking at myself, my mind automatically, still with eight years sober, will tell me, girl, you know, you could just do a little and nobody would know and then you could lose some weight fast because it's all about that instant gratification, baby, don't you know? That's what I'm talking about. I want to be skinny tomorrow. But guess what? That instant gratification, that being skinny tomorrow, it won't last. It won't last. And that's what I have to remind myself, Nicole, getting skinny tomorrow, it might feel good and you might look good, but you will gain it all back. That is why I'm trying to change my habits. And you guys are watching that happen in real time. You know, I have to back up a little bit so y'all can see me. I feel better than I've ever felt in my life. I'm not skinny yet, but I'm losing and I'm looking good and I feel good. And I feel like it's coming through in the way I talk, in the way I hold myself. Let me show y'all from this angle too so you can see my legs. But, you know, I feel like my legs are looking good. I feel like I've been doing so much walking that you can really tell, you know, you can tell. Look at this. I still got it. I still got it. I still got it. I still got it. What? Okay. Hey. <laughs> but I'm really, really trying. I'm really trying to keep myself up and get myself better. And I want you guys to know that if you struggle with cross addiction like I have, you're not alone. And there's no shame. Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation down in the comments. What are some things that you guys are doing to change your bad habits? Um, I've told you guys the things that I'm doing to change mine. What are some things that you guys are doing to change yours as well? Um, I love you guys and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.